Before I get going on the uh, Gilson videos here, um, I just wanted to uh, do a shout out to uh, Eric Ernst, Ernst. I'm probably saying that wrong. The link will be in the description. Um, he has just a handful, maybe a couple handfuls of subscribers, and he's uh, working on his IROC, or he's going to be. Um, he has a great garage. Oh my God! It, I mean, just in terms of size, it's huge. Um, anyway, I think he's worth following. If you like cars and you like uh, watching guys work on them, I, I, w I would urge you to go over and uh, take a look and subscribe if you if you think you like it. Uh, he's also very inventive. <laughs> he had, he, one of the things holding him back from uh, working on his car was the capacity of his air compressor was a 20 gallon. So he, um, local store went, had a sale on 20 gallon air compressors. So he went out and bought two of them, and now he hooked them up together, and so now he has 60 uh, gallons of air plus 14 CFM, something like that. Uh, it's actually quite a clever idea because when he's done, he can then break those up and one can go to his shed or his garage or whatever, and then the other one can be put somewhere else because he, uh, from the videos, that's the impression I got is he, he has that one main garage he's going to be doing the body work in, but he has uh, a couple of other smaller buildings. And uh, so while it probably cost him as much to have those three compressors as it would for one 60-gallon, you know, um, compressor he can now uh when he's done break them up and put them in the garage uh you know in separate garages um anyway so pretty clever guy uh he just got louvers for his um iraq so um if, if you get a chance go check him out subscribe um he he's doing some cool stuff and i think it's just going to get better as time goes on and I, i'd like to see him get some momentum um just seems like a real nice guy and like to help them out so so if, you know if you get a chance check his channel out again the link will be in the description so okay on on to the gilson stuff <laughs> the um so just a couple of side notes um as of December 1st, I will officially be retired from work, but it's paper only. I can't, uh, at 53, I'm not going to get my, enough of my pension to do anything with it. I mean, it would be pointless. So I really just got to find a job to keep a seat warm for another nine years, and then I'll get my full pension, and that's when I'll actually retire. Um, uh, so for right now, I'm just officially retiring from my old company just so I can keep my insurance and other benefits that retirees get. So it's good for that reason, but that's the only reason I'm officially retired. You know, officially retiring. Uh, the other, the other thing is, um, yeah, it didn't turn out well, and yeah, I could have uh, used rattle can, but frankly, uh, I, I wanted to try it and just see how it works. I just need more practice, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a Harbor Freight gun, so I don't expect a lot from it, but keep kicking off on me, so I'll use this camera. Um, so it was just more an exercise, and I just need more practice. The gun isn't going to make up for my shortcomings, that's all. So I just, you know, and doing it outside, yeah, that doesn't help. Um, uh, one viewer, gosh darn, I can't remember who it was, said that I should probably use, I could use a, like a, a tent, like a three or four man tent or whatever. Uh, that's actually a good idea, and I'm, I'm looking into that. I probably that, um, because I do want to paint more parts. I just, you know, it's just, we'll see how it goes. Um, but that was really, um, I just wanted to kind of clear that up that, yeah, it turned out horrible. And to be honest, uh, next summer, you know, since I only use it for plowing over the winter, next summer, it's going to bother me to the point that I'm sure I'm going to pull all the, the uh, panels off and repaint them. But maybe by then I'll, I'll, I'll be better at it, or good enough anyway. So uh, hopefully then I'll have another tank too, so I'll have a 20-gallon reserve uh, instead of a 10. Um, I, think, I think just to save my compressor from kicking on a lot would be the only reason that I would need that really. But uh, yeah, it's something I'm going to consider for sure. And that's it. So, I, uh, <clears throat> I have the, uh, 
Uh, this stuff just kind of sitting here. I'm going to have to take it off here in a minute. But I just wanted to show you. This is what I taped over. This is the original color. So it's it's pretty darn close. So big shout out to W1 Weasel for pointing out that this is pretty close to that color. And he wasn't wrong. So um, it didn't turn out great. There's uh, trash in here from, you know, because I had to do it out in the garden. There's dull spots back here where the spray didn't happen very well. And uh, there's like, you can see there's like ripples in here where the, the, the paint went on too heavy and just sort of dripped. All that aside, I'm leaving it. I'm fighting every urge I have to sand it all down and start over because um, the a quarter of this paint isn't the cheapest thing in the world and frankly it it was a lot of hassle and um, there's a couple of issues. One is um, I just don't have enough, um, I haven't practiced enough with the um, uh, with that air gun to to um, do it properly. The other problem is is it's a cheap well, it's twenty dollars now. It was like forty dollars when I bought it. Harbor Freight um, spray gun, uh, air gun. The um, problem I was running into there's a there's a a knob on the bottom that adjusts how much airflow comes in, and then there's a, a knob right on the side that adjusts how much flow you get. And twice that knob on the bottom creeped up and cut my airflow off. I was just like spraying all of a sudden, no air. And that's what was happening is it just it was creeping up at first i thought i did it when i was holding the gun but i made sure not to go anywhere near that and it still did it so just vibrations causing it to to screw up and then cut my air supply off and then the other one the one that adjusts the flow rate would just randomly move and again i thought well it's you know i thought i finally wound up taping it and it and then it stayed but by then i had pretty much everything done so but this is going to do what I want it to do, which is protect the metal, right? Keep it from rusting. This is going to be snow, uh, moving snow all winter long, and it's going to get snow and water and salt. So I just, that's all I'm looking for here. I just want to try to make this last as long as I can make it last and um, keep the snow from, you know, eating into it. So um, anyway, I'll be back in a minute. I want to show you a little something with the motor. You see the oil pan there and did the oil dry. I put uh, oil in there and as I was topping it off, um, I walked away for a minute, came back, and there was a big puddle of oil under here. The gasket that fits right between here and here, you know, this is where the uh, sump or the uh, well is for the oil, and this is where the actual engine block is. I, I know you can't really see it very well, but it was just pouring out through here so I tried to keep make sure that gasket was in place when I dropped the engine down because I dropped it straight down but it must have pinched or rolled back so I've ordered a new gasket I've got to take all of this off again put the new gasket on only this time I'm going to use some gasket glue or something so that it stays in place um, and there's no chance it's going to move when I drop it down uh, and I'm not going to use silicone or RTV because um, I just, that stuff, I, I just don't have very good luck with it, so. But, one step forward, two steps back, right? So, because now the starter's got to come off, I've got to disassemble the drive shaft, I've got to take a bunch of this stuff off and lift the motor up. If that's not enough, I realized I left the washer off. So now i got to take all the shroud, i got to take the shroud cover off, pull the the flywheel and everything off and so uh, has to come out anyway so I might as well so it's probably just as well I figured out that you know or that I see that happen now so that I I can fix it but that's all right we're not even into August yet I still have plenty of time to get this puppy up and running so that's about it for now though I'll bring you back if I got more later okay so that's what happened I put the motor on and that this gasket got pushed back that's why it was leaking hopefully you can see that I think you can 
So to fix that, I got a new gasket. There's the part number if you need it. Oh, don't need that. So if you're looking for a part number for a 16 horsepower Briggs and Stratton, there it is. It comes in this envelope, which you have to cut, and it's like really close. And I know that from the last one. You know, I wish they'd put a, like a strip on here that says cut here or where you can just pull the, you know, I mean, you have no idea where to cut until you do do. So, anyway, I did get it out. I do, you know, as you can see, I do have the gasket now. Oh, and it came in this big ass box. I don't know what's wrong with these companies. They're shipping everything in boxes twice the size. And, uh, oh, repairing my little GoPro light camera, the USB plug came off, so I took it apart. And, uh, so there's the rest of it. It's the screen. Anyway, I gotta solder that back on, so that'll be fun. Okay, so I got that. And to keep the what happened with the other gasket from happening again, I talked to the local uh, small engine expert, and he recommends this. I put a little bit of this on one side of the gasket, let it firm up, and then put it on the base, and then that way, uh, and then let it set up. And that way, when I put the motor on, it'll keep it from sliding. But still make it easy to get off if I ever have to take it off again. And um, it won't, like, put RTV all over in the inside of the motor. So hopefully that'll work. We'll see. I'll probably bring it back at some point. Yeah. Uh, once I get the uh, once I get this stuff on the gasket. But that's not going to be today. Because um, one of the problems I'm having is I, for, I forgot I needed where is it hang on so there's a washer that goes on here this ain't it obviously and the only other one I have is too thick but it goes on and then the nut goes on and then this goes on over that but I don't have the washer. I don't know what I did with it. So I gotta find that. Uh, find one for that. This is the other. This is the one that I have that's too thick. And because it's so thick, this sits out too far. And then there's a big gap here. And that pushes everything back. And then it won't go into the drive shaft. So I have to find one of these about half as thick. But. Oh, well. But that's where I'm at. One step forward, two steps back, right? And uh, he's right. The, the, I forget who commented that this looks like a uh, cartoon character, but it kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's where I'm at. More later. Before. After. I wasn't sure I was going to get those rubber pads off, but I managed. And I used some uh, spray adhesive to hold them down, and they seem to be holding up pretty good. All right, got to clean this one and get it set on there. Okay, so if you're going to use a spray adhesive like I am, if you want to protect your paint, a little painter's tape before you spray uh, does a pretty good job of creating a line uh, where you need it. So. Just a friendly tip. It does work. It pulls it right off. You might get some of it pull up, so just cut it. So I have like a box cutter with you or something. If it starts, to, if the glue starts to pull up, just cut it and push it back down. It'll stay. Okay, this thing is fighting me every step of the way. I got it all back together, no leaks, put oil in it, it's fine. The sealant I use, perfect. Get it all set up and test it, no spark. Son of a gun. And I can't spin it outside of that base because there's a little um, oil slinger on the bottom of the crank. And it will it goes below the bottom of the... Uh, the engine case into that oil 
to fling it up, right? So the only way I could test it was to get it back on. And I figured I had it, but turns out, even though these two coils look alike, this is the coil that was on there that uh, that was working uh, when it was working, right? The one that fried when the water got on there. This is the one I bought. The key difference here is the insides. This one has... Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what I do know is um, if I touch this and this um, with my meter, um, there's no resistance. But there is here. So this isn't exactly a replacement for this. And after doing some testing, it's definitely this is for a much newer Briggs motor. This one is obviously for a more older one. And this has a 80, 1988, 85 date on it. So now I've got to find that one exactly. And because they didn't make the... Um, pointless coil for my motor you have to find one that works uh, off of a similar motor and uh, so I don't have like I can't like go to Briggs and Stratton's web page and plug in my coil uh, the point the coil that uh, requires points and come up with a coil that doesn't require points it's it does, doesn't unfortunately doesn't work that way so um, back to the drawing board on this anyway <laughs> Man, this thing better be worth it when I'm done, right? <laughs> Later.